Hello and welcome to the Petticoated Swashbuckler. My name is Marin and uh, are you ready for some capsizing? So I'm currently working my way through the inventory of uh, an English woman who died circa 1780. Her name was Mrs. Anne Bamford. I will link her uh, inventory down below. And, uh, you know, I've made some small things, some larger things, some underwear, some outerwear. Um, lastly, I made this beauty here um, that I haven't put away yet because I just love looking at it. So beautiful. Um, but after I made something big, I always feel like, you know, making something small, vary it up a bit. So I thought I'd make a couple of caps because the inventory is full of caps. Like there are a lot of caps. Some of, some of them are specified, you know, some are specified as being uh, this sort of cap or that sort of cap. Like we have the wired cap um, that I made last year. And was it last year? Earlier this year? I can't remember. Anyway, the wired cap. Uh, one of the caps mentioned in the inventory is a lappet cap. Now a lappet cap is, it's just a fine little sort of white cap with uh, something called lappets hanging from it. Now a lappet is, it's basically wide lace ribbon, I think would be the best way to describe it. It's it's, uh, I don't know, they, they seem to be between that wide and that wide and made from lace. And the funny thing is they seem to be uh, like removable. So you would have, it seems like you would have one pair of lappets and then loads of caps and then move your lappets from cap to cap. So they'd be on one cap one day and then if you felt like wearing a different style of cap the next day, then you just move your lappets to that cap and that way you could have a lot of wear, get a lot of wear out of uh, one pair of lappets. Um, and the lappets would probably have been quite expensive, but so that makes sense. They would have been lace and lace was expensive before uh, the era of machine made lace. So I will try and make a cap um, with the lappets, but I thought wouldn't it be fun to make a a pair of lappets and two caps so I can actually move the lappets between the caps. So that's my plan. I will make uh, and I will use the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Beauty, Hair and Beauty, Beauty and Makeup. I will link that book as well down below. Sorry I can't, I'm blanking on the title. Um, the Hair and Makeup book. I will use their pattern for a lappet cap and I will use also use their pattern for something that's it's not exactly a cap they call it a proto poof uh, and it's basically a sort of structural triangular it basically looks like a piece of cake uh, it's it's a triangle with loads of poofiness and uh, decoration on it. It basically looked like you're having a triangular piece of cake on your head and it, they're so interesting and I just I love them. I love the fact that they are triangular and I love the fact that they are sort of stiffened and shaped to go on your head. So I'm gonna try and make one of those as well. Uh, that's my plan for this month. Do you want to come along? Just a small notice before we uh, get into the real fun. Uh, if my uh, voiceover is a little uh, hoarse and uh, a bit more quiet than usual, this is not affected. I'm not trying to um, uh, imitate anyone. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm just. I have a cold, uh, and uh, my voice is just starting to get back. But uh, I thought you might want to see this. As soon as possible so instead of waiting for my voice to come back completely um, you'll just have to live with my uh, my horse and uh, and uh, sultry voice for this uh, video I uh, cut out a triangle from uh, silk taffeta the same silk taffeta I made my stomach from 
Uh, I also cut a couple of uh, lengths of uh, silk organza. I got some copper thread and uh, a little bit of off-cut lace. I don't know if you recognize this, but this is actually the hem of the lace I used for my silk organza apron um, this winter. I also cut two short and one long silk ribbon and uh, I found my uh, silk veil from the uh, Rowena costume that I made uh, this winter. Uh, I love the look of the veil but I'll never use it as a veil because it's too silky and uh, slippery. So it can be given new life now as my proto poof. I folded all the sides of the silk tafta triangle in and just basted them in place. I then folded the uh, basted seam allowance over my copper wire uh, and stitched that down. This was fiddly, as you can see. Uh, the copper wire kept trying to sort of push my project out of the way um, and it fell out of the little sort of pocket I was making and snagged on stuff. So this, this took a while, but you know, it's. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. I think it feels and looks right. The proto poof is supposed to be edged with uh, organza strips, so I've did the same thing with them, uh, folded the seam allowance in and basted that down uh, and then folded it again and uh, just made it the tiniest hem I could using a uh, little and uh, evenly spaced hem stitches because this organza is so see-through. Every mistake you make becomes very obvious. Having hemmed my organza strips, I then went in and removed my basting stitches. Now, uh, I later regretted this and actually went in and made uh, some new ones and removed the gathering stitches that I make here because it turns out that it gathered more nicely from the side than from the middle of the piece. Um, but you know, you. We live and learn. Having uh, gathered the strips of organza, I uh, pinned them to my uh, now uh, uh, wired triangle and just stitched them in place. And I made sure to catch every uh, peak and every valley of these uh, gathered uh, pieces so that they would actually stick and I wouldn't have some big gaping openings along the side which I thought wouldn't look too nice. Uh, being uh, pretty happy with my uh, proto poof so far it was time to get on to the real fun of decorating the top uh, for which I decided to use my uh, medieval silk uh, veil. Um, I folded it in half and I decided to just sort of roll it up. I didn't want to cut it, just, just in case I'm going to use it for anything else. And also because I didn't want to hem it. Uh, I've already done that. That was not a fun thing to do. Um, the ends I've just folded over and gathered to make little poofs. Um, I did the same on both sides. My goal was for this to look like a big and poofy, brainy piece of cake. 
So I just uh, folded up my uh, my uh, silk piece, um, sort of arranged it to look nice, and when I was happy, I pinned it in place. Uh, I made a couple more sort of gathers just to prove it up a bit. Uh, I think the uh, American Duchess book tells you to do so as well. And it's probably even more important when your fabric isn't as compact as mine is, but I like the look of it. I think it looks nice. I then went in and stitched uh, the silk to the uh, poof uh, backing or base, whatever you want to call it. And uh, after I was done with that, I decorated it with the lace remnant, I attached the ribbons, and then I moved on to my, uh, my little uh, leopard cap. I cut my cap from uh, the same silk organza that I used for the, the frills on the proto -proof. These are remnants from the silk organza apron I made last winter. Uh, I just made a very simple coif shape, folded all the uh, raw edges in and uh, basted them down. And then I made the little, uh, little uh, gathering, well the little eyelet hole. Uh, at the back for gathering up the back and give the uh, the uh, cap the right shape. I uh, attached some ribbon uh, just uh, to the sides and uh, pulled it through, poked it through the uh, eyelet hole and pulled that through. And then I folded the seam allowance up over the, uh, the ribbons uh, to create the little casing, uh, being very careful not to stitch into the actual ribbon. Uh, because then I wouldn't be able to gather it up. And uh, yet more hemming. I just folded my uh, seam allowances in two, making a tiny, tiny hem with very, very even stitches. I uh, hemmed all around. So this is how my cap looks now. Uh, it's not shaped yet, so it's very flat and silly. But now is the time to start pleating the lace onto it, which uh, will look very nice. I started by finding the middle of the lace and the middle of the front of the cap pinning those two together and creating a box pleat at the front and then just pleating as regularly as I could uh, the lace to the cap all the way around all the way down to the drawstring with the ribbon in it.
I uh, pinned my pleats to the cap as I went along. Uh, one day I might make a, a video about how I how I make pleats because there's there's absolutely no mathematics involved in it. The way I do it, it's just uh, fold and measure, fold and measure, uh, and the result is pretty nice. With all the pleats uh, pinned down, I went in and I whip stitched them to the edge of the cap with uh, the tiniest whip stitches, trying to make my seam as, uh, as small and uh, well pressable as uh, as I could. So this is the cap, uh, and it really is kind of done. Um, all it needs now is the lappets. And I'm using the same lace. I've just folded, uh, cut two pieces of lace, folded them in half, and I've run some gathering stitches along the bottom. Uh, and I'm just stitching them together along the sort of midline, using the same tiny, tiny whip stitches, because I need to sort of pull these out and pop them and press them later on. The uh, end of the uh, lappet I do as the American Duchess Guide book uh, tells me to, by gathering up uh, and uh, stitching through all those gathers. And uh, this makes for a nice rounded tip to my, uh, to my uh, lappet. So these are my lappets, and I'm pretty happy with them. I uh, folded over and hemmed the top edge, uh, pinned them to my cap, and I took both my uh, lappet cap and my protopoof for a little walk.
if you are still here, it means we're friends. And I'll tell you a secret. Come closer. Come closer. Yeah, come, 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 come. If you feel like I'm a little less bubbly in in this video, um, and that I was a little less bubbly in the in the brown gown video and that I haven't been uploading to Instagram as you sh you know as often as I used to and all those things the reason is I got a new job and it's wonderful I'm a teacher and I really love my new job it's absolutely wonderful but it takes a lot of energy to get used to a new workplace new colleagues, new routines, new tasks and also I've been doing the work from home thing now for a year and a half and I'm simply not used to being around that many people anymore and while I love it, it, it drains me a little I'm a little out of energy these days I'm sure that in, you know, in the long run the opposite will be the case. I will have more energy because of my new job. But at the moment, um, I'm still waiting for that to happen. So I'll just have to ask you to be patient and uh, to stick around because we'll do some we'll do some real fun stuff. I have some great projects lined up. So, uh, I'll see you around. Take care.